Our name is Sarah Romsey, and I'm the Archive Matica Program Manager here at Artifactual Systems. And I'm really excited today to give you uh, a demonstration of some of the, the functionality that we're currently in QA right now. So this is the 1.5 version of Archive Matica. Uh, we're in a, a quality assurance bug testing state right now. And uh, we're hoping that you're all interested in taking a look at these new features and maybe even giving it a try yourself and seeing if you can assist us in, um, in fixing and identifying uh, some, some bugs or identifying bugs for us to fix, I guess. Um, so uh, the Archive Matica 1.5 release is going to have uh, three major new features in it. And we're going to talk about all three of those today. So the first is a ingest for the purposes of updating metadata or um, making a dip. Uh, the second is making a hierarchical dip for upload to Atom. And the third is uh, archive space integration, um, uploading uh, metadata about your dip to archive space. Um, if, you, if you're not familiar with Archive Matica, if you've never used it before, um, the purpose of this webinar isn't really to give um, a full introduction to all of Archive Matica's uh, functionality. Um, I would recommend going to our YouTube channel and watching some of our previous screencasts that are more um, introduction to Archive Matica for, for those who might need a little bit more um, just basic familiarity with the software. Um, you can always, of course, post to our user forum and you can always um, read our documentation, which is all um, uh, available online without any paywall or anything. Anybody can read our documentation. So hopefully there's, there's enough information out there uh, to, um, to get, get the information that you need. So um, what you're seeing on your screen um, is familiar, I suppose, to most of you. It's the, the Archive Matica dashboard. Um, in the, the 1.5 version, you're not going to see any major, major uh, dashboard changes. We have all the same tabs at the top and so on. And uh, the first um, functionality that we're going to look at today is ape free ingest. So um, I've already made an ape that I would like to send back through the system. And to find that ape and to re ingest it, I'm going to go to the archival storage tab. So um, this is the easiest way to demonstrate ape re ingest because um, you know, it's through the, the graphical user interface and you can see it on the screen. But just know that you can also do it through the API for the storage service. Um, you can also do it through the storage service um, user interface as well. So um, here we're in our archival storage. Um, in this particular uh, dashboard, we only have 10 apes stored, so there's no need really to do a search. But of course, if you wanted to find a specific AIP, then you would uh, do a search to find it. But here, this one that I've called Demo Ape for Reingest, this is the one that I'm going to reingest today. Um, so I should mention that this functionality uh, was sponsored by the Zeus Institute in Berlin, and we're really um, happy that, that they were able to sponsor this development so that it's functionality that everyone can benefit from. Um, we're actually right now also further developing this functionality, and I'll explain um, how we're doing that in just a second. So. Um, the difference between a 1.4 version and a 1.5 version in the, uh, the archival storage screen is you'll see the addition of this re-ingest button. Um, so if I want to re-ingest this ape, I just click re-ingest, and it gives me a couple of options. In the 1.5 version of Archive Matica, we're supporting two types of re-ingest, and they both send the ape back to the beginning of the ingest tab. Um, one way is to just re-ingest the metadata. So the idea behind this is you have a change to your metadata either to the rights or to the descriptive metadata, and you'd like to um, you'd like to re-ingest the ape so that you can update its mess file and update the, the metadata files within it. Um, the other way is that you can re-ingest both the metadata and the object. However, in the 1.5 version, the only object normalization that will be supported is for the purpose of making a dip. So you, in this version of Archive Matica, in the 1.5 version, you won't be able to re-ingest an ape and rerun it for preservation. Um, and you won't be able to do any re-identification or re-characterization or anything like that. But the great news is that we're working on that functionality right now, again, sponsored by the Zeus Institute in Berlin. 
and uh, we're going to be able to release that functionality in the 1.6 version of Archivematica, which I would anticipate being later this year. So um, just to reiterate, in this current version that we're looking at, 1.5, um, you can either update the metadata or you can make a dip and update the metadata also if you'd like at the same time. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to re-ingest the metadata and the object and click re-ingest package. So this ape that I pre-made before the webinar to, uh, for the purpose of, of demonstration, it had a rights record um, in, the, um, in the Mets file. So I had created some rights and in my fictional scenario, I supposed that uh, the copyright hadn't been cleared and so I made a rights record indicating that uh, we couldn't disseminate the material because of copyright reasons. Um, so what I'm going to do when I update the metadata for this ape by re-ingesting it is I'm going to update those rights to say, oh, actually now we've gotten permission from the creator and now uh, we, we're able to uh, do some, some dissemination of the material on certain conditions. So back in the ingest tab, um, if you were really paying attention or if you can see on the, the screen, um, you will see that we've got a new alert here um, with the number change in the ingest tab because we have an ape uh, re-ingest to approve. So just like when you start a SIP from backlog, you get a, an approval stage. So uh, if we made a mistake, you can reject it at this point, but I'll just approve it. And uh, now it's going to run through to the point of uh, normalization. So I'm at the normalization step and I'm going to pause at this moment and update my metadata because I want to do two things with this ape. I want to update the metadata to say that under certain conditions I'm allowed to disseminate it. And because of that, uh, these new conditions, I also would like to make a dip. But first, before we, we tackle that normalization step, I'm going to update the metadata using the little metadata report uh, icon that we always have. So um, this will look fairly familiar um, to uh, most of you if you've used this functionality in Archivematica before. The only major change here is that you'll see that there's an add metadata files option. So at this point, you could add a metadata.csv file and you would do that by browsing the same place as your, your transfer source location. I'm not going to do that in this demonstration. Instead, I'm going to update the rights. So if I click on lists under rights, we'll see that we have a, a disseminate um, uh, act that is disallowed on the basis of copyright. And I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to suppose um, that the, the copyright basis isn't going to change, although you could change this if you wanted to. You could also have deleted this entire rights basis and added a new one if you wanted, or you could leave a rights basis and add a new one. There's lots of different configurations that you could do here. So here before where I had this act of dissemination and saying it was disallowed, now I'm going to say it's conditional. And I'm going to change the restriction note to say uh, donor has allowed dissemination under certain conditions, whatever those conditions are. You can continue adding new uh, grants and restrictions if you want to. I'm just going to save this one and say done. So now I've updated the metadata. You can see that the restriction is now conditional instead of disallow. And uh, to continue uh, with the, the normalization and, and the rest of the, um, the process, I'm going to go back to the index. So we still have our, our uh, SIP uh, sitting here. Um, and now I'm going to normalize. So uh, this is a bit of a, a user interface optimization that um, hopefully we can consider before uh, releasing the final release. But it, this makes it look like you have all of your normal normalization options. Uh, unfortunately, um, in the 1.5 release, that's a little misleading. So if I chose to normalize for preservation and access or normalize for preservation, um, even though they look like they're viable options, the process will fail because we don't yet have the code written to, to allow that. So instead, what I'm going to be careful to choose is normalize for access. And what this, what this is going to do is it's going to make um, a dip out of our ape that we originally created. So it's going to do its normalization.
and uh, we get our normalization report as usual. So we can take a look at that. You can see that there's all kinds of failures in the preservation normalization, but that's because it didn't didn't attempt to normalize for preservation because that's not um, supported in this current version of the APOE ingest. Um, but it did do all of this access normalization. So in other words, we're going to have a dip made out of all of these new access copies that we've just created. So I'm going to say approve. And uh, now it will continue the process. Um, we still have the reminder for metadata. So if I hadn't already updated my metadata, I could do so now, but I, I did it before normalization. So I'm just going to say continue. Processing the metadata and it's going to make the dip. It's going to take a couple of seconds here. Does all of your kind of normal um, ape storage things, even though it's, it's not actually going to uh, prepare a new ape. So what's going to happen once it's done preparing this ape is um, when we store the ape, um, all it's doing is updating the metadata. And you can see that if you review, is our demo ape. Um, if we download this, uh, this ape to review it, there won't actually be any objects because there's, there's no new ape object. There's only new ape um, metadata, um, which actually we can uh, look at. <laughs> so uh, I'm here in my review ape again. Uh, we can easily get to the Mets file now by just a, a direct link. Um, oh, oh, there we go. So I'm just going to make this a little bigger so that you can see it. And I know, uh, maybe not that big. <laughs> I know um, a lot of you probably don't spend as much time looking at Mets files as uh, we do sometimes around here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a search for the rights metadata, which if you know your premise in Mets is the rights MD. Here we are. And um, you can see that we have this rights statement that's been labeled as superseded. And what this is, is it's our old rights statement that we started with um, that had the, the disallow for dissemination. So that right statement has been superseded. And down below, we have a new right statement, which we just added, which is called current. So the basis remain the same. All of that metadata is the same. But you can say that, see that we now have this conditional restriction for uh, dissemination. So our, our Mets file has been updated. So whatever system that we may be using to track um, uh, right statements, um, whether that is just within Archivetica or for you, if you're using your Mets file within another system uh, to help you understand what your, uh, your, your rights for your digital objects are, um, you now have a, a, a right status that's updated as current. I'm just going to close out of that, make my screen a little normal size again. And uh, back in our dashboard, Um, in addition to this ape, which we can put away, uh, which is really just, again, updating the metadata. It's not putting any new objects in archival storage. We also have our dip. So um, previously, when I first made this ape, I didn't make a dip. But now I have, have a dip if I choose to upload it to one of the supported access systems or just store it away or whatever I want to do with my, with my dip. So that just works uh, the same as you would deal with any, any dip in uh, the current Archivematica workflows. So I thought that um, after I finish each of these um, these sort of mini demonstrations, I would pause for questions, uh, but we'll also save time at the end for questions. So if you have any questions about ape re-ingest, um, if you'd like to pop them in the chat window now, or you can save them to the end. I'll just uh, take a moment to pause and, and let you think if you have any questions. I don't see anyone typing. Okay, we have a typer. A couple of people. Uh, so there's a question, does the new metadata get placed into a new DMZ set? Uh, that's a great question. I didn't happen to demonstrate updating the descriptive metadata. 
Um, but the, if you were to update the descriptive metadata, it works the, the same way as what we just saw. So we just did an update to the rights metadata, which in premise goes in the rights MD. But if you had um, pre-existing descriptive metadata and then you delete it and update with new descriptive metadata, then it would work the same. You'd have a, um, like a current and a superseded version of your DMD set. And I think there's one more question coming in, so I'll just uh, pause for a moment to see that. Um, can we use this workflow to implement as a migration strategy? Um, that's a great question, and I would say not quite yet. So um, this in the 1.5 version, it's really only functional for uh, creating access copies in terms of normalization of your digital objects. However, that is functionality that we're working on right now, is to be able to um, update your digital objects um, by uh, rerunning all of the same tools that you run in transfer. So re-identifying, re-characterizing, re-validating all of those um, actions, and then uh, replacing your preservation derivatives if you choose. So in the 1.6 version, um, if you wanted to kind of make a migration strategy out of this, what you would do is you'd update your rules in your preservation planning tab. So say down the road we have a better thing than TIFF for images. You would update your, your preservation planning rules to say, um, you know, I, I don't want to make TIFFs anymore out of JPEGs. Instead, I want to make this new file format. Um, so you then re-ingest your apes and update uh, and update the preservation versions that way, while always keeping your originals. So that's one of the reasons why. Um, in the Archismatica AIP, um, you always have a copy of the, of the original. Any other questions before we move on? I don't see anyone typing, so I'm going to continue. Uh, but we'll have time at the end for questions as well. So if there's another uh, question that's burning in your mind, uh, feel free to, to ask it later as well. So uh, the next uh, functionality that I want to show to you is the ability to make um, a hierarchical dip is what we're calling it, <laughs> um, which is uh, sort of a, just a way of saying that you can apply levels of description uh, within your um, within your uh, dip that you create, or your ape and your dip actually uh, that you um, create using the backlog functionality. So I'm just going to make my screen the normal size again. Um, so for those of you who use the Archivematica backlog. Um, ability here. Um, this will should look just slightly different to you. Um, you have this new button called Edit Metadata, and I'll show you kind of how that works. So first, I'm going to find something in my backlog. I stored something earlier so that I could pull it up. So here I have um, a uh, uh, transfer uh, with materials that I would like to um, make an arrangement out of, but I. I I, uh, I need to make an arrangement that's maybe different than the one that we transferred it in as. So I can create my directory. So let's say that this is a, a, just a series of material. And within that, we want to add some files maybe. I'm using archival terminology to name these things, but that's not necessary. I'm just not being very uh, creative this morning. Uh, so you could call these whatever you want. Uh, when we were first developing this feature, I had a, a very complex series of um, fruits and vegetables that were going into uh, an Archivatica ape. So this functionality already exists in Archivatica. You may be using it. You can make a structure for your SIP, which then translates to your ape. Um, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to apply levels of description from our access system to this arrangement. And in the 1.5 version, the supported access system is Atom, which uh, for those of you who aren't familiar is the, um, the archival management and access system that we also develop here at Artifactual Systems, just like our Archivematica. It's, it's free and open source and its purpose is, is for um, describing and providing access to, to archives online. So, here is um, an Atom site, and it, uh, those who use Archivematica and Atom together know that there's some configuration that you have to do behind the scenes to have your Archivematica dashboard talking directly to your Atom site. So this is the Atom site that happens to be 
talking to this particular uh, Archive Matica dashboard. So if I log into this site, we're going to do a couple of things. Uh, one, I'm going to show you the, uh, the levels of description uh, taxonomy in Atom. So Atom ships standard with a set of levels of description, your kind of standard set, collection, font, series, subseries, file, item, etc. But you can change that um, by going to the Manage menu and Taxonomy. And we'll find the levels of description taxonomy. And here we can see um, what's currently listed as acceptable levels of description in, in this Atom installation. So um, if you wanted, you could add or remove from this. Like maybe the term, maybe you don't work at an institution that uses the term fall, so you just want to take it out of the, the list of possibilities altogether. Um, we have subseries here. Maybe you have a need for a sub subseries. So we can add a new level of description. Call it sub sub series and uh, create that. And now when we look at our levels of description, uh, we have an additional level of description here. I uh, probably, in retrospect, would have typed that in with some dashes, but you get the idea. So uh, what we've done between Archivematica and Atom is we've given Archivematica the ability to fetch this list of possible levels of description. And you do that in your Archivematica dashboard under Administration, and then Atom Dip Upload. Uh, for those who are current Archivematica users, um, this user interface has been improved a little bit. So instead of having just a, uh, a text box that you have to type all of these commands in, we've made it individual fields, which we hope will uh, prevent some user error in the future. You also have this new levels of description button. And we can see the list as it existed, but we can fetch from Atom. And now we have this additional one of sub-sub-series. Uh, you can change the order in which they appear. You can also remove them, which doesn't remove them from your Atom database. It just removes them from the possibilities uh, in Archivematica. So if you don't want people to be able to use uh, the term subfall for whatever reason, you can remove it from the possible levels, and then it won't be an option anymore. So in order to use these levels of description in our SIP that we're creating, I go back to my ingest tab where I have my uh, arrangements sitting, waiting to go. Uh, because I navigated away, I have my whole backlog here, but there are my objects that I want. And um, now I'm going to apply levels of description by clicking this Edit Metadata button after I've highlighted the, the level. So here I have something that I'm supposing is a series. So I can choose the level of description series and click Save. And then it gives me a little indication. It says series in, in italics. And I can do the same with my files. Click save. More things with my files. Maybe I, now I want to use my, my sub sub series. Um, I'll just enter another subfolder under my series. And I've called it test description, and I can edit the metadata and call it sub sub series. So now I have an arrangement, and now I can drag objects over and place them in the, the appropriate place. So maybe I've decided this belongs here, and if you expand it, you can see that it's sitting there. So maybe this file has a couple of items in it. Maybe my sub sub series has a couple of items in it. I could have created files within my sub sub series. You know, you can go like you can make your levels as deep really as you want. Uh, we haven't yet found a practical limit to this. Um, so now I've I've clicked and dragged some things from my backlog over there. I could drag things from other transfers. Um, you don't have to take them all from the same place. Um, maybe you've put a bunch of things in backlog that are all related to the same collection. So you want to an arrangement that includes all of them. That's certainly a possibility. Once I'm ready to go, I'll um, choose the top level or whatever level I want to create my SIP at. You could choose something within it, but I'm going to choose the top level. And I'm going to click Create SIP. Uh, it's just going to confirm that I'm sure as in the current uh, version of, of Archivematica. And we approve our SIP creation. 
And now we're going to run this through to the normalization stage, and we're going to make sure that we make a dip. And uh, uh, we're going to take a look at the METS file again, and I'm going to show you how it is that Adam is able to understand this uh, hierarchy that we've created. So here at normalization, I'm going to say normalize for preservation and access. So I'd like to make an ape and a dip. So we'll just let this run. Well, this run is running. I'll uh, maybe take the time to go back. Oh, well, now it's ready for approval. So I'll just approve that. I'm not going to bother reviewing it. While it's finalizing our ape and our dip, over in Atom, the way that dip upload to Atom works, if you've never done this before, is you need to send your dip to a specific archival description. Um, so uh, we have uh, just a number of uh, kind of dummy things in here already, but we can create a new one. If you're not an Atom user and you're interested in any of this functionality, um, on the Artifactual YouTube channel, there's also um, Atom webinars that you can watch as well. Um, so we don't need to create like a full archival description. Uh, we just need at least a title. Um, so I'm just going to call this thing um, a demo. And I'm going to click create. And the reason why we need an archival description to send it to is uh, it needs a target. And how we're going to convey that target is through the slug. Um, that's up in the URL, the unique part of the URL. So you have your Atom site uh, uh, website URL, and then slash, and then a, a unique um, string that describes the, the item. Uh, it, it generally uses the um, name of the archival description as the slug, but you can also, um, in future versions of Atom, you'll be able to use uh, the identifier as well if you prefer. So I'm just going to copy so that that's on my clipboard. I'm not sure that I did that properly. I'm going to copy so I have the slug on my clipboard back in the Archivematica screen. Oh, it's reminding us to add metadata, so I'll just click continue there and continue the process of making our ape and our dip. So, as per usual, we have a, a dip that's ready before we have our ape. Um, oh, but now our ape is ready too. So first, before I upload uh, the dip, I'm going to review my ape. And just a general note, um, this is a demonstration, so not kind of playing it fast and loose with best practices. But we do generally recommend that you store your ape before doing anything with your dip, so that your dip objects always have a preservation copy that's already stored, and you know that it's referencing the correct thing. If you upload your dip um, before storing your ape, uh, then if something goes wrong while you're storing your ape, you could end up with these dissemination objects that have no relationship to a preservation object because your ape may have failed for some reason. Um, so I'm just going to ignore that particular best practice today, but um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a look at the METS file again. So again, I'm just going to make this just kind of bigger so that hopefully you can see it a little bit better. And the main difference between this um, METS file and one that you would have seen in previous versions of Archivematica is way down at the bottom, we have two struct maps. So if you're a, a METS aficionado, then you may know that um, the struct map is literally the structural map um, that shows the structure of the AIP. And in this case, it's going to show the structure of the uh, DIP as well. So in previous Archivematica uh, versions, you would have always had um, an archivematic default struct map, uh, which is a physical one that reflects the directories within the ape. So you can see the directories that we created and the files within them. Down below, we also have a struct map which we've labeled as hierarchical, and it has this type of logical. And you can see that our objects folder is a series that we created, and then the files within it are files and there's my test description, which I gave the type of sub sub series. So it's it's um, this structural map that's going to <coughs> excuse me that's going to help Adam understand how to create this hierarchy and what levels of description to apply. 
Um, so again, you don't need to like you don't need to be a person who reads med files day in and day out. Um, but just so that you understand what's happening behind the scenes, this is how Adam is going to understand this hierarchy. So I'm just going to close out of that and make my screen normal size again. Uh, back in our ingest tab, um, I'm going to upload the disk to the slugs that I uh, made. So I still have it on my clipboard. I can just uh, paste it there. One of our most common dip upload uh, troubleshooting problems is putting in the wrong slug. Um, so uh, copying and pasting it is a good practice. So we click upload. And uh, from Archivematica's perspective, this upload is successful. Um, it's showing us uh, success here, and we can review the dip in, in a directory if we want. Let's go over to Adam, refresh the page, and take a look. Please. Great. So here we have um, our top level description has been assigned the level of description of series. Within it, there are two files and one sub sub series, and the items within have sub archival descriptions as well. Um, you might have noticed, or maybe not, that when I made this hierarchy in Archivematica, I didn't apply any level of description to the actual objects. I only did to the directories. Um, you can apply levels of description to the objects if you wish, but if you don't, then Adam just assumes that every object it receives in a dip is um, an item. That's the kind of standard configuration. So um, here we have this item which has been placed inside the hierarchy as part of a file. I should have mentioned, sorry, I, I uh, forgot that maybe not all of you are Atom users, um, but this on the left-hand side is what in Atom we call the tree view, and it, it um, represents the hierarchy of the archival description. So this is the way that um, our users of Atom navigate their way through a fall or a series or a collection or, or what have you. Um, with each of these uh, dip objects, there's some technical metadata that comes from Archivematica, and this is uh, the current functionality, like if you're using 1.4 to make dips to upload to Atom. Um, you'll get the object UUID, so the um, unique identifier that, that Archivematica applied to the original preservation object, as well as the uh, ape UUID. So the idea being that someday in the future, you have a user who really wants the original copy of this, uh, this particular file, you have an easy reference to the ape that you can grab and uh, find in your Archivematica dashboard and, and get access to the original. So that is um, that is the hot, what we're calling hierarchical dip um, in, in Archivematica 1.5. And I see that there's a question. Um, say that you could use an identifier in the slug instead of title in a future version, or can you do that now? Um, that, I believe, will be in Atom 2.3. Um, there is a way, like you could do it through some custom configurations in the back end. We've done it for clients before. Um, but if you wait for the 2.3 release, um, which should be coming out in the first quarter of this year as well, um, you'll be able to just choose that as a, um, as a configuration option in your Atom administration. Are there any other questions about um, this functionality in, in 1.5? Great, thank you. We think it looks good too. <laughs> we've, been, we're, we've been pretty excited to release this functionality. Oh, and I should mention, of course, um, it was sponsored by the National Library of Wales, uh, just to uh, give uh, kudos where it is due. Um, so it's been, uh, it's been tested there for quite some time now, um, and we've just been a little bit behind getting it out the door uh, for the public to use. So we're really excited about this, this functionality. Okay, well, again, if, uh, if you think of a question that you'd like to ask uh, later, then we can certainly revisit this at the end of, of the webinar. Uh, but now I'll move on to our third and final um, uh, demonstration for this webinar, and that is the archive space dip upload. So I'm just going to collapse a couple things here, and in fact, uh, yeah, I'll leave it like that. So um, earlier, uh, before the webinar, I got a, um, a SIP ready that's sitting at the normalization stage, ready for us to, um, to process and, and make an ape and a dip out of. <clears throat> so um, the basic workflow that is uh, supported in 1.5 for working with archive space 
is very similar to our workflow that exists right now for Archivist Toolkit. Um, some of you may be familiar with that workflow or maybe have even tried it out at your institution. So the idea is, is that you make a dip that you're going to send to uh, some kind of uh, web server or some kind of web storage, um, and you're sending metadata about that dip to Archive Space and making a match between your archival descriptions in Archive Space and the dip object that you've just created. Um, uh, those who are users of Archive Space, Archive Space is a little different than Adam in that it allows you to um, link to um, digital objects that are stored on some other kind of uh, web server, um, but uh, it doesn't actually store the digital objects itself. So we call this feature dip upload to archive space, but it's a bit of a misnomer because you're not actually uploading your dip. It's more, uh, it's more about matching the metadata between your dip, uh, which you've sent to like some kind of web server, and uh, your archival descriptions that exist in archive space. So uh, before um, we go ahead and make a dip here, I'm just going to go to the administration screen and just show you uh, the dip upload configuration. Um, so obviously, uh, just like the configuration that you do between Archivematic and Atom, uh, you need to be communicating to a specific archive space server. So we have a test one here that we work with. Um, and you need to uh, put in some information here. Um, you can do some, um, some work with uh, restrictions, so you can make them based on premise statements that you've made in Archivematica, um, or you can also just uh, say that, like, no, there's no restrictions that apply, or you can also say, yes, blank date restrictions on all of these things that, that we're sending to Archive Space. You can also put in um, use statements um, object type, um, so there's a taxonomy within Archive Space that um, manages the type of object. So just as a demonstration, we've chosen image service, but it, it could be something else. Um, you can put in your conditions for uh, governing access and governing use, and that will extend to every that you make um, with, with this workflow. Um, so if you don't have a blanket thing that you need to say for every single dip, then you should leave that blank. Um, here is where you would put in um, wherever it is that you're sending your dip object. Um, we don't have that configured in our demonstration server, so we just don't have anything there. But that's where you'd, you'd put the information about, like, where do these objects go so that archive space has the link that looks correct um, to be able to serve up these, these images or these files or whatever they are. And then finally, archive space is multi-repository. You can have more than one repository. So uh, it needs the number of repository from your archive space. Um, so your Archivematica dashboard is going to send dip metadata to a specific repository within archive space. We currently aren't able to support um, sending to multiple repositories unless, of course, you come in and change it in the administration tab, like each time you're sending a dip to a different place. So back in the ingest screen, I'm going to take this uh, SIP that I started earlier and uh, I'm going to normalize the preservation and access. Again, just making sure that I choose um, an access normalization uh, path because I want to make sure I make a dip so that I can uh, do this connection with archive space. So I'm just going to uh, approve without reviewing just to move the demonstration along. Uh, again, we could add premise metadata here if we wanted to add rights metadata, um, but I'll just continue it. I'll mention um, while Archivematica is doing its work here um, that we're working on a, a different sort of like a, a version two of archive space integration right now um, with the uh, great folks at the uh, Bentley uh, Library at University of Michigan. And it will um, look quite different. In fact, it's going to add a whole new tab to Archivematica um, in a future version later this year. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll definitely have another webinar when we have that functionality uh, to go. And some of you may have even seen presentations by the folks at Bentley um, but, uh, and wondered if you're going to see the same functionality today. Uh, but we're still in development, so we're still making fine tunes and tweaking. Um, so this functionality that's ready to, pretty much ready to uh, be released um, was sponsored by the Rockefeller Archive Center, uh, which we're super appreciative for. And um, so it, it reflects a slightly different workflow than what we've been developing for, for Bentley. 
um, but in feature versions you'll be able to do um, sort of a more comprehensive integration with archive space than what you're seeing today. So here we have our ape ready and we have our upload dip ready. Again, I'm going to ignore best practice and not store ape just for the demonstration. Um, so for upload dip, I'm going to choose upload dip to archive space. And uh, the next thing that should happen, <laughs> and this is just part of the QA process, is you should receive a screen that allows you to match these objects to each other. Now it, it's not uh, giving it to you automatically. So I'm going to click here so that we get this screen. So now um, Archivematica has talked to my archive space test server and it's grabbing all of the possible things that I could match to. So we only have a couple of resources, um, but this uh, list will show you all top level resources, which you can then uh, filter if you need to. I'm going to choose this test resource that uh, I've made. Uh, and this test resource, um, supposing I just wanted to match my diff objects directly here, I could click assign diff objects to this resource, um, or I can keep navigating down the hierarchy. Um, so here I made a series uh, called webinar demo. I click there. And uh, this, um, this series doesn't have any children. Um, so that's why I get this screen now. Um, as soon as you reach the lowest level, it gives you the matching screen. So uh, suppose I want to grab a couple of things here and they belong to this particular series. I click uh, my object from my dip. I click the series name and then I click this pair button. Um, I, can, I can go back up the um, hierarchy if I want. And maybe I want to add a couple things to this series. So unlike the backlog search, this isn't showing us like everything in backlog. It's showing us the dip that we've just created. So that's why we see there's two things that are grayed out. And that's because uh, we've already arranged those somewhere. So um, I can take another thing and arrange it to this series. Click pair. And maybe that's everything that I want to uh, match from this dip. When I'm ready to go, I can click Review Matches, and it will show all of the matches here. If I decide, oh, everything I just did was garbage, I can click Restart, and it deletes them all. But these matches, as soon as I clicked Pair, they were written to the Archivematica database. So um, they're already kind of there, waiting to go, waiting to sync up with, with Archive Space. And when I'm done, we just we added this finish matching button, which really just bumps you back to the ingest screen just so that you have an easy way to get back and say, like, yep, I'm ready to go. So um, again, this is just all part of the QA phase of, of releasing a, a software release. Um, I, if I uh, choose to send this along to archive space at this point, I will get an error because unfortunately we're, we're working our way through uh, a bug that um, that has been introduced to the code. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, and unfortunately, you're not going to see the magic of, of the matched dip. But the idea behind it is, is that your metadata about your dip, the technical um, information about um, like the file UUID and any of that information that you configured here in your administration tab in terms of um, access and governing use statements and all that kind of thing, are going to be sent uh, to the archive space resources via the API and new digital objects uh, will be reflected in your archive space um, uh, resources once you, you do this uh, match that you can. Uh, so sorry that I can't show you the, the full Monty today, but um, hopefully that gives you a sense of how this, um, how this functionality will work and uh, we'll have uh, this working and have the bugs fixed up before we do the, the final release of the software. So are there any questions about um, archive space or about any of the other functionalities that we looked at today? I'll just give you a few moments to uh, get your questions in there if you have any that you'd like to type in.
Uh, will it be possible to just send the eight UUID to archive space? Um, that's a great question, and I'm not actually uh, positive about that. Um, so I'm going to look into that and get back to you on that. Um, we still, as you may have gathered through this demonstration, we still have the most QA and uh, and um, bug fixing to do with the archive space functionality. So um, I'll communicate to the community via the um, via the listserv to let you know um, uh, exactly what functionality it is that that made it into the final version. Um, is there an estimate for when 1.5 will be ready for production? So out of quality assurance, ready to go. Um, we never like to give exact dates because, uh, of course, um, life can throw wrenches in the way. But um, at this point, we're looking at probably like sometime in February. So more towards the end of February is my estimate at this time. So there's a question about the hierarchical dip. Uh, going back to the hierarchical dip, is it possible to dip that has its object structured hierarchically internally, or is this just expressed through the Met's metadata? Um, it, um, if I understand your question correctly, um, it's expressed through both. So the um, the ape, well, hmm. so the ape has the internal structure. The dip does not. The dip just has um, the reflection of the hierarchy in the mess. So it doesn't actually create directories within the dip. Um, in Archivematica, dip is still flat. Uh, I can show you what that looks like. We go to the, uh, this is the dip that we made through hierarchical dip. If we review it in our uploaded dip folder, uh, here it is, demo series. And we look at the objects. You can see all the objects are just in one folder. Um, so this is the way that Adam, anyway, uh, currently expects to receive dip objects. Um, so it's configured to un to look at the net file to understand how to label things. Um, so the dip itself doesn't have the hierarchy, like physically, but the ape does. Hopefully that's clear. Any other questions before we wrap up today? Doesn't look like it. Um, so I'm just going to give you a screen that has some information about how you can give this a test if you haven't already. Um, the uh, bit.ly link down there at the bottom uh, just links you to our post in the user form that has all the information about this QA release. Um, so if you're particularly interested in, say, testing it with Adam, um, you can go there and get all of the um, credentials and everything that you need. If you just want to log into this test server that we're using today, um, it's at apricotjelly.archivematica.org um, with our same uh, demonstration login that we have for our sandbox site. So that's demo at example.com, password, demo, demo. So we'd love to see some of you there. If you give it a test and you find an error, other than uh, the obvious ones that we already talked about today, um, I'd love to hear from you on the, the user list. Or um, if you're more comfortable, you can always pop me um, an email offline. I'm at swampy at artifactual.com. I'm always happy to hear from any member of our user community or our potential user community. Uh, we just love to hear from you. So uh, thank you so much for attending our webinar today, and I hope you got a lot out of it. And it's uh, really nice to see all of your names. Um, many of you are, are folks that we know, and, and some of you are folks that I don't. So uh, nice to meet your acquaintance. Hope you have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.